Today we're going to be having a look at one of my favourite assets on the Unity Asset Store. This is Gaia. If you've ever tried to use the Unity Terrain system to create uh, detailed environments, especially in large external uh, terrain settings, uh, you'll know that a lot of work needs to go into the placement of objects, the terrain shading, and all the little fiddly things that are needed to create a really good looking terrain. And what Gaia strives to do is make this process really simple. So let's import the package and see how it works. Okay, so here we have the Gaia package. Even though it's a quite a big and complete system, it doesn't overwrite any of your project settings, so that's a really good start. This time I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through all of these folders. I think you'll get a lot more benefit out of me just uh, starting a project. So you can see there's no examples folder here like uh, many of the other ones. Uh, that's because it's going to be so quick to get up and running with our own project. We may as well just do it that way. What I will note though is that there's a documentation folder that has uh, all the release notes, a quick start guide, and the full documentation. And I really love this quick start guide. I wish uh, more asset packages had a quick start guide like this. Even if you're brand new to Unity, you should be able to get up and running without too much trouble. I'm just going to speed through some of this initial setup. Uh, if you just follow the instructions here, you'll be able to catch up really quickly. I should also add that their YouTube videos are also really good. There's a lot of um, instructional guides uh, that are about half an hour each uh, that take you from uh, importing the project to uh, having something uh, complete and ready. Okay, so to get started, I'm just going to come to Window, Gaia, Show Gaia Manager. Okay, so a lot of work has been done to make this as easy as possible, so it's just one, two, three. That may seem too simple, so uh, behind the scenes there's this defaults and resources. Uh, if we have a look over in the inspector, there's a lot of different settings in here uh, that will determine uh, what exactly happens when you hit those buttons. So lucky for us the defaults will be fine just to be able to create a level. So let's start with number one, create terrain and show stamper. Okay, so this has created a terrain uh, which spans about 2 kilometers by 2 kilometers. Uh, that's something that was um, defined in the defaults. And what it's created is a session manager and a stamper. So the session manager um, records everything that you do. So at a later stage, if you want to create the exact same terrain again, you just have to run the same session. And the stamper is really cool. Uh, you can just uh, randomly generate the terrain, but I like to use the stamper. So if we hit select on the preview, uh, there are a couple here that we can choose from. The stamper pretty much works on height maps, so you can use any terrain data that you have uh, to be able to uh, stamp your terrain. I'm just going to search island, okay, so here's a nice stamp. So if you stamp you can do whatever you want, you can rotate it, change the position, change the width, and when you're happy with that terrain you can come down and just hit stamp and what that does is it then makes it part of the terrain okay so then what I can do is if I can make this a lot more complex by selecting a different stamp coming back over to make some changes to it okay and what we're going to end up doing is making our island a lot more complex and a lot more interesting so I'll hit stamp again so what we've done is we've combined two different height maps there to uh, make our terrain and you can do this as much as you want and get as detailed as you want. Now obviously making the terrain really complex is going to have a performance hit. Uh, so what you can do is you can open the terrain helper, hit smooth, maybe even do that a couple of times just to smooth out the terrain and make it a much simpler object. Okay, so once you're happy with how that terrain looks, we can move on to step two which is create spawners. Okay, and this is what we use to uh, add textures to our terrain uh, and also spawning trees, grass and any other objects you want to add to it. So with all of these you can go into a lot of detail with your spawner rules. Uh, I'm just going to leave everything as default. Uh, so I've come to the texture spawner to start with and I'm just going to hit spawn. Okay, so based on our default uh, set of rules, uh, we're saying that if the slope is a certain um, um, our steepness, uh, it will be this rocky terrain, if it's flat it will be grass, 
Uh, if it's close to the water, uh, then it'll be a sandy type terrain. So already, just with a couple of clicks, we already have a terrain that looks uh, pretty decent. In a later video, we're going to review a um, package called CTS, which is the uh, Complete Terrain Shader. There'll be a link to that down in the description. Uh, that's really worth checking out to make the terrain look even better as well. Okay, so next step is our object spawner. So this will be for any uh, rocks or buildings or anything else you want to spawn around the terrain. So if I hit spawn, you'll see a bunch of objects popping in. So they're actually looking for the flat ground areas uh, where it's likely that something will spawn. Uh, I'm just going to hit spawn again uh, to spawn more of them. So up in the Rockies and uh, also in the water, uh, nothing's going to spawn. It'll just be on these flat ground areas. Okay, so next let's spawn the trees. So we're spawning the trees based on uh, cluster locations, so this sort of gives it a realistic feeling. Uh, there'll also be trees that just appear out on their own separately, so for that there's a coverage tree spawner. So we hit spawn on that. Trees will just fill those extra areas. Alright, last one is the coverage spawner, so this will be any grass. So I'm just going to hit spawn on that. Okay, so the detail is finished spawning. Uh, so we can go back to the guy manager and click number 3. So there we've added some unity water, uh, a wind zone, and uh, a player that yeah, is just a very basic 3D player that you can move around the map. Uh, so I've just done my 1, 2, 3, now I can run the application, and there we have it, there's my game world. So uh, we can see down here we're close to the water, there's a lot of sand. As we go over here there's some nice tree coverage uh, and grass coverage, and those trees uh, and the grass move with the wind, so that's really cool. As I come through here you can see some rocks on the ground. I don't think their lighting is finished baking, but aside from that, uh, they're looking pretty good. Very detailed rocks. Uh, performance wise, I'm pretty impressed with this, uh, because I am running this on a Mac, uh, which generally has lower performance than uh, running it on a Windows machine. So it's running uh, quite smoothly, even with uh, Unity Water, which isn't uh, quite performant. You can see the grass coverage changes as we go into different areas as well. There's some red... Um, poppies or something down there. The sky is just the default Unity sky, but there's a lot of different add-ons uh, which uh, a lot of them will be looking at together, uh, which can make the sky look even better. There's really quite infinite possibilities to the, what this terrain tool can be used to do. Uh, obviously you can still go in and make a lot of changes after the fact. You'll notice down here that there's a um, uh, building and uh, no grass is spawned around the building. So those coverage spawners are quite intelligent. As long as you um, do them in that uh, same logical order, uh, you'll have the same sort of performance. Okay, so Guy does quite a lot out of the box. Uh, like I said, you probably want to use uh, a few other add-ons as well. Uh, so for your sky effects, uh, your water effects. Uh, in the next video, we're actually going to be reviewing Enviro. Uh, which uh, we'll use our same level um, as we've made here again uh, to showcase Enviro. So Enviro is a uh, environment management system uh, and of course we'll be talking about that more in the next video. So my reason for wanting to show you Gaia so early in uh, this series is there's actually a very long list of products that we're yet to review uh, which are fully compatible with Gaia. So one of the coolest things about it is under this uh, GX tab, any other Unity Store packages that are compatible with Kaya will show up in this list. And they'll generally have like one or two buttons to implement it, so they'll actually automate that whole process for you of integrating into Gaia. So when we get to the next video where we're covering Enviro, I'll show you how to do that um, through the Gaia interface. Okay, so I've told you a heap of things that are good about Gaia. Are there any cons? Well, you just need to think uh, very specifically about how you intend to use the product. If you're planning to create terrain that is uh, limitless and procedurally generating, uh, then this would not be the package for you. Gaia is more intended as a starting point for people who want to finally craft their terrain. 
I should also mention the product is quite cheap. It, it's normally uh, $47. Uh, at the moment there's a huge sale on, so it is at a lower price. But even at $47, uh, I'd be jumping on that quite quick. Uh, Gaia 2 is coming out soon. Uh, with, and I'm not sure if that will impact the pricing at all, but that's just something to keep in mind. So the product was re originally released in October 2015. Uh, the latest update was at the end of October. It's currently the end of November, so only about a month old. So it's receiving frequent updates. Um, I know the developer cares a lot about this product. I've actually seen their presentations at uh, the Melbourne Unite this year. So they're very passionate about working on the product and working with other people to bring more to the product. With those other Unity packages such as uh, water systems and environment systems. Okay, so as you can already tell, uh, this one's a thumbs up from me. It's one of my favorite packages that I've come across on the Unity Asset Store. It's obviously going to be supported well into the future. And you get great results with minimal effort. And we'll be diving further into it in the next video when we have a look at Enviro. So thanks for watching and I'll see you then. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this series, please like and subscribe. We have new videos every Tuesday and every Friday. If you would like to support this channel, uh, there is a donation link in the description. Or you could check out our latest products on Udemy, which are also linked in the description. One of our latest courses is for Unity Editor Scripting. So if you want to learn how to dress up your components so that you can sell them on the App Store, that would be a great place to start. If you would like to suggest a package for us to review, uh, please leave a comment down below. Or if you want me to review your package, uh, please reach out to me on applicreative.com forward slash contact and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.